Okay. You'll find yours on the top. Okay. Okay. So if you guys can look at <coughs> the screen, that'd be great. Okay. So, yeah, this doesn't say much, but this is what I came up with and what I'm going with, I think. Frozen yogurt places in Santa Barbara, in close by. Uh, this is the one was I found on Yelp or whatever it's called. Uh, Do you like frozen yogurt? Kind of. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a sweet tooth, but like, it's, it's alright. It's alright. Yeah, I think it's like, it, I enjoy looking at it. It's so many colors and... <laughs> <laughs> You're such an artist. <laughs> you kicked it because of the aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this is just, uh, yeah, I try to gather as much information as possible of all the places. The one of them, I, I think this one, Twin Cups, Closed down, I think. I'm not sure. They might have changed name also. And yeah, like hours of operation and uh, the homepage. And I didn't find prices anywhere online, so I have to go and ask them, I guess. And yeah, this is the yeah color themes. I'm, I want something with like this this blue color. I am decided yet. Uh, there are some yeah types. That's pretty much what I got so far. I yeah. So tell us what you're missing. Uh, I don't know exactly. Okay. I need. I don't know what to put put in it. Uh, more like I think I need a bit more information. Yeah, Maybe, you do. Uh, I don't know. So you didn't have to guess. You did know that there was a list of things required for your design brief, right? Yeah, I think I followed it. Okay. But, yeah. All right. Well, let's get some more going for you. So this maybe will help you guys. So if you guys are on your computer, I'd love your attention up here. Please. Okay. So we're going to start by brainstorming for you because I think you need help. Yeah. Like Do you feel like it? Yeah. Yeah, he's not very excited about his yogurt, is he? <laughs> we need to taste it for you. Yeah. Maybe what you do is you need to buy yogurt cards for all of us and then hand them out and we'll go field research for you. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like an idea. It does. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So you're doing yogurt, um, yogurt in Santa Barbara. Yep. Okay. So maybe this will help all of you. Who's doing a store kind of thing? <clears throat> what are you doing? Burgers. Burgers. Okay, this will help you. And um, <laughs> Laura, who's not here today, she's doing Mexican food. And um, who else is doing a foodie thing? <coughs> what are you doing? The boba. That's right, oh, yeah. the boba. I'm doing right. like, co it's not really food, they're like whiskey cocktails. The whiskey cocktails. Yeah, it's it's all similar stuff. So let's, let's brainstorm it. Okay, so all of you are going to have to create locations, right? So yeah. when you identify and compare locations, you're going to find a map, and chances are your map is going to be that pan and zoom expanding thing. Yep? All right. You might want to make your own map with your own icons on it, okay? Yeah. Right? Now, a map might just be for location, or you decide if your map does other things. Maybe you have a map overlay of ranking them by the best to the least, okay? So you're going to want to know what flavors they have, right? And the number of flavors. Yeah. What else? Yeah. How else do you guys rank yogurt? Cup options. Cup options. options. Huh? And toppings and stuff. So yeah. cup options means what? Oh. Sizes or does it mean do it yourself? Sizes. Yeah. 
What else we got? Top aims. Somebody said top aims. Right? Top aims. And Additional when you items. think in terms of delivering information, that's the difference. Um, when you think in terms of delivering information, don't think in terms of listing. It's boring. We're all visual artists. A picture's worth a thousand words. So your map locators get us there. Your flavors, you might create a table. It's a table. Um, to create flavors and it might just be the colors and each color is uh, you know the flavor and who has a checkbox in whatever flavors right you know how to make tables I know you do you're good at tables no, I, can't. I know I know you are um, cup options what sizes do you make a little icon like you don't need to say it's got a small medium and large you might have one cup size and you have it it sits on a scale or you might have a teeny cup, a baby cup, a, a small cup, a medium, a large, an extra large, and then one size that just sits on a scale, which means we just weigh it. Yep. Right? So think in terms of icons, creating a graphic or a visual for it, right? Um, healthy or not healthy, right? You can rank it by um, calories or sugar or uh, what's it called? Uh, lacto but the probiotics, that's the word I was going for, thank you. Yeah. Um, right, the bacteria ranking, you know, like good bacteria, right? Yeah. And, and the visuals, all visuals. And, um, and if you think, you know, if you start to think in terms of a grid and you've listed your 10 yogurt stores, you might decide each page is a different ranking. Or you might put all of your rankings on one page, depending on how it fits. You might have um, the store, some big, you know, let's, let's think about your layouts when we think visually. So maybe you've got your page, and here's the logo of the store, and here's this amazing photo of that uber beautiful yogurt you made at that store, right? Yeah. And maybe you have a pull-out tab here, 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 here. And you grab your finger and you slide it up and it says, you know, over the top in sugar, right? And you pull this one out and it says um, zero fat, right? You could do that. How do you make pull up tabs? Well, we're going to learn that. Oh, good. It's an exercise. And um, same thing. So you could decide, or it could be laid out that way with your comparisons. Or you decide that you've got logo, 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 and then you've got a grid here, which might be kind of boring, of all these categories of sugar and toppings and, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when you think about this, think about how to visually execute this stuff, right? Um, what other categories can we rank yogurt by? Supplements, maybe. Supplements. Oh, like when you go to Jamba Juice and you yeah, get an like antioxidant in it? Sort of thing, really. Okay, so healthy, does it have a supplement? Um, the hours it's open, when you have cravings at 2 in the morning after you finish your assignments. Um, what's the ambiance of the place? Is it a good place for friends? You know, so many yogurt places have no tables. It's like, we just want you to buy the stuff and leave. We don't want you to sit here, right? There's some of that. Or um, friends or a date. Um, yeah. See, I went out of room. So ambiance. Um, what else? Additional items like. Oh, can we buy a pretzel? Or pretzels, right. Yeah. Other food. Ice cream. Other foods, right. Can you pair whiskey with it? <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Service. 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 Right. Uniforms. What do they wear when they're there, when you work there, right? Uh, clean, right? Yeah. <coughs> you get the idea. What else is there? Um, yogurt. 
Mm. Types of yogurt, which would be coconut milk yogurt, dairy yogurt, soy yogurt, that would fall under categories. So alternative yogurt, right? Flavors, um, alternatives, right? Then you need to, and I want all of you to really get into this part, get into the pictures. Decide if you're going to just photograph the storefront or if you're going to have a little teeny storefront photo and you're going to photograph the yogurt. Or if you're going to do a Kevin and you're going to do an aerial view of all those little containers with all the toppings, right? Yeah. And do like Kevin did with all the toppings on the burritos. So. <coughs> Think, you know, you got to start thinking visually, and that's why you do your thumbnails. You start to think visually like those. Does that help you? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Anybody got more to add to that? Uh -uh. No. Okay, so now you get to get your phone and snap all those things we wrote down. How's that? That's perfect. Help you? Yeah, definitely. Did we jump start uh, yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Who else wants jump, jump starting? Yeah. You still don't have an idea? Um, for my movie theater. So. Come up, come up here, come up here, please. Okay, so we did yours. It's right here. Okay, so you want to you want to brainstorm all that? Yeah, Jimmy has to take photos. I mean, um, Mike has to take photos. So you already went through your field guide of theaters. Mm -hmm. We just didn't brainstorm enough for you, did we? Yeah, I just need some help. Okay, so let's tell Jimmy, tell everybody your idea again. Um, so I'm going to do like a field guide for movie theaters at Santa Barbara and talk about the atmosphere or the ambiance, snacks, and I don't know what type of people go there, but I don't know if it's a, if it's a good idea or not. I'm you don't know if it's a good idea? I don't know. I feel stuck. Are you, are you stuck? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. What's stuck about it? I don't know how to divide it into categories. You can also do the architecture, architecture the style of the movie. Mm -hmm. Or nearby so restaurants that are good to go to before you go to the movie or after. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm walking over to the other side. Did you get the bottom ones or no? Oh, no. You did this? Yeah. So, um, so complete, so theaters, this is theaters. So is it a date, proximity? To dining? Dining or a bar afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Or dessert after the movies? Mm -hmm. Or oh, there's some restaurant that makes that is closed, that is open for lunch, closed for dinner, and it opens at 11 p.m. in town here. Did you know that? No. Which it's one? it's like a, a Thai. It was a weird restaurant. I think it was Thai food, mm -hmm. like Thai Peruvian for lack of a better description. Do you know oh, what I'm talking about? On Cannon Perdido. What is it? Uh, she used to be late night only. Yes. Late night only. Um, teeny weeny. Little teeny table. She makes like funky sandwiches and uh, oh my gosh. What's what it? it called? She's on Cannon Perdido now. She used to be out of the Thai place on state. But she's awesome. Oh, did I get it right then? See, did I pull all the right stuff? There you go. Yeah, you did. Funky I mean, weird sandwiches, funny she, little type I mean, I think she has a normal dinner hour too, but she definitely does late night. Mm. Right. And it's just a single old lady. She like started this business mm. out of someone else's. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so you've got a division of architecture mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. You've got what snacks do they serve in there? What are the prices? Mm -hmm. Is there reserve seating? Right, we forgot that. Um, is it um, is it a new new movies or old um, uh, forget independent movies? <coughs> so is it like an independent indie? 
you know, like the small theater movies mm -hmm. or big box, right? Okay. Um, do they have, uh, like, Boyfriend Loves Stadium Seating? Who loves to see those things that are the really steep thing? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter to me. I don't see the difference, but he thinks that's the end all. So, type of seating mm -hmm. or reserve seating. Yeah, that, that I have, I think. How do we do? Does that make you feel better? Yeah, yeah, it helps. It helps. You know, I think sometimes when you guys just see it in front of you, it's easier. Yeah? yeah. Anybody got anything else? Movies? Throw on the drive in theater. <gasps> drive -in. Oh, Is there a drive in still? True. Yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. I haven't been to it. It's good. Just as a. I've been there a couple extra. times. So can you wear the bunny slippers to go to the movies? I know, I know friends that like bring their trucks and put a gun in the back. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, really you guys, did you guys go drive-in since a kid? No. I've never been to one in my whole life. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's an olden day story for you, right, John? So there, there were regular movie theaters, but there were drive-in theaters. And the reason there are no longer drive-in theaters is because the developers have now bought that big, massive land with a zillion stores on it, right? But we used to have a station wagon, and, and all my cousins and I would go in the back of the station wagon in our pajamas because we were little kids, and we'd all, and they'd back in so we could all lay in the back with our pillows, and we'd watch, you know, Bambi. And, <laughs> and they'd hook a speaker on your windows. Um, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Did you, did you go to drive-in? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Is that a kid experience I described? Yeah. Yeah. Every, there, were, there were two here, like, back in the day. There were, yeah. Um, one, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's kind of mm -hmm. like um, whoever went to a drive-in, um, before there was, like, Jack in the Box that you drive through, there were drive-in restaurants, uh, like soda shops. The D&W oh, yeah. 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 root beer. Is that they what it was? Yes. You'd park in a place. Oh, yeah, like the Flintstones? Like, like, like when they put like, the yes. little car window? Or like the Flintstones. <laughs> it's exactly it. Like the Flintstones. And, the year, too. you know, and is that 50s? Is that a 50s thing or something? Yeah, that was the year, the Flintstones here. But it was. You, they'd put, you'd roll down your window because there were no electric windows. And you'd, or maybe there were. And you'd hook on a tray and it would sit outside the window. And you'd get burgers and fries and stuff. Yeah. And some actually, the, roller skates on it, and some of the yeah. people who would serve you, you would be, Sonics on here? well, it's like when you, yes, that's what Sonic that still does. Yeah. They still do it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, all you guys have to do is watch Back to the Future, right? And yeah. go back in time and, and grab it. But did that help you? Yes, thank you. Okay, did you get your snapshots of it? Yes. I think John wants all snapshots emailed to him. Yeah. He does because then he will make it as part of the lecture. Yes, oh. Carol. Well, when there's nobody, I wanted to get some feedback. On yours? <laughs> well, we don't have to wait to nobody because you're somebody, so come do it now. Okay. How's that? you got to explain your concept to everybody and put it in context so they understand oh, what right. you're talking about. Did You You didn't make a brief yet, right? Um, not a formal one. I, I, I took notes. I should have brought my Let me grab my notebook. Okay. Um, I have kind of a problem with running around checking things out because of the wheelchair. So I decided um, maybe I would check out something that was geared for people in wheelchairs. And then I got to thinking about the place where I live, where there's a lot of disabled people, and many who are not. Um, and it's called a retirement place. And it's been through a lot of incarnations, and it's now a retirement place. And there's a lot of very different people there. And, um, I thought I would do, I honestly can't interview everybody there. That wouldn't make any sense. So I thought I'd pick one person, up to seven or eight people, of very different types. People who work, people who don't work, people who sleep all day, people who are men, people who are women, people, um, well, you can give me some more ideas of um, what information I could collect. And then I would do a photograph of each of them. One thing I will try to do is include people who have pets. Pets aren't really allowed there, but um, people have them. And the people I've noticed have very different pets. One lady has a bunny rabbit. 
Uh, one guy has a cat who won't let him pick it up. Uh, that one I don't know how he'd photograph. Um, anyway, those were things that I thought of doing. Um, can you give me some ideas? Okay, so did everybody follow that? Did everybody follow Carol? <clears throat> She Good lives in a, you. so she, because of her mobility, she's not going to be running around town. So actually, Carol, you can also create a map. Um, I'm going to make this on two sides of the board. So I'm writing things behind you, Carol. You might want to turn around. I'm going, I'm doing that. All right. Um, so Carol is a retirement facility, but, so now we have to figure, we have to look at the retirement facility in terms of how to compare things there, and she's going to compare them based on people, right? Types are different things that are available at the retirement facility. <coughs> so that can, that's her little community. So you can make a map of the retirement sure. facility. Okay. All right. So you're going to make a map of the retirement facility. You can make a map locating who lives where, right? Because you're profiling people, right? Locate Why? people's um, apartments in the facility, right? Because you have different types of people. Yeah. And over here, if you rotate down around this way, I don't want you to miss when I click here. You're categorizing it based on types of people, yeah. whether these people have hats, yes or no, and their kind of pet, and you have lots to photograph here. What the ages are, like you'll have a, a chart, a range of ages where that person falls in age range. Um, you said a lot of people are disabled. What's their disability, right? Mm -hmm. um, or mobility, maybe. And I assume everybody has mobility. Everybody has independent living, right? So they all have their own apartment. Mm -hmm. So how do does each person personalize their apartment space? It's like if you went into an apartment building you guys are living in, all your apartments are probably identical in terms of the shell of it. But one when thing, you walk in, your homes are all different. One thing I am going to do is their doors. Okay. Almost everybody in that place decorates their door. Okay, so there some we go. Some very elaborately, some kind okay. of shabbily. Well, that's a beautiful metaphor. A door is a beautiful metaphor for the opening to each profile of each person's life, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody ranks the food at the facility because some people you can eat in common spaces or you can cook on your own. So you might want to rank the food at the facility. Come on, you guys. What else? You must know people who live in kind of community stuff. It's the same thing as living in a college dorm. Same thing. Right? Pretty close. Right. What about the temperament of the people? Like, who do you want to run into in an elevator? Right? Isn't it the well, worst when you wake up in the morning and you know there's somebody you do not want to see in the morning? Because <laughs> they're just going to ruin your day? What about That's, people's temperaments? How what do you categorize temperaments? How do you categorize it? Yeah. You decide. Mm, okay. Just Are they, you can make it, like, yeah. yeah. Or they could be sun, you know, you could have a sun and a moon and they're either <laughs> a dark, a light personality or a dark personality, right? Okay. They're either filled with sunshine or, or they're flat. They're like, they're like low tide or something. What else? Uh, like entertainment. Like, do they show like movies or games? Or ah, that's a good one. Oh yeah, they have movies and musical events, and I put down when I would check out who goes to what and okay. how many. Okay, great. That was a good call. Um. They have a swimming pool. I get people who use it in the dog. Oh, sports activities. You said that earlier today. Yeah, so. I have a bunch of activities. They work very hard on that. Okay. Um, some of them seem pretty weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll put some of those down. Okay. Look behind you also this way because there's more. I marked on the board behind there. Oh. Okay. I kept talking as you kept talking. I kept talking. So. Take some. Take a That's okay. We're not in a hurry. We're good. Um, more thoughts? Anybody more thoughts for that? So you have lots of categories to organize with that. And do, I would create a map out of it. You're going to have to ask them for a map diagram of the facility. 
Okay. You could also do gardens, right? Or people's hobbies. That would be oh, that's activities. A good idea. So hobbies. Uh, outdoor space. How about outdoor space? And then you decide how to rank it, and or how each person has an opinion about it. Is there a program for mapping? Mm, yeah, illustrators do a program for mapping. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah, it probably is, but you're you're just gonna probably scan what they have and maybe color it or something like that. Okay. Okay. And there's more up there. Does that help you out? Yes, it helps a lot. Okay. Thanks John, do you want to photo that before? Um... Sure. Okay. Who else? Okay, come on up. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, so my field guide is going to be about palm trees in Santa Barbara. Palm trees. Palm trees. Just. In kind Santa Barbara. Of, yeah, kinds of palm trees. Okay. Um, so I started just walking down the street where I live, basically, taking some pictures and then looking up to what I found, uh, which is a lot. Um, and it's kind of hard to just look at the pictures and then try to identify because some of them look very similar. Uh, so I just started uh, Googling and finding information, uh, trying to come up with uh, categories like the scientific name, um, origin, um, how much sun they need, how uh, fast they grow, the size of them, and how long they live. Um, I'm not sure if I will use just these ones, but that's what was easiest to find. And why I chose palm trees is because I uh, I really love palm trees, so I feel like this is something that I will be inspired to do. I already feel that when I walk around, I like, oh, that's a king palm, and um, it's cool to know something about it. Uh, I chose between palm trees and breakfast places because those two are there's a bunch of them in Santa Barbara, and I love them both, but. Palm trees I thought could be more fun. And here are some color themes. Um, I want to go with like the colors of palm trees basically, like natural colors and lots of green. And then um, also to create some contrast, maybe like red or pink. Um, and here I have my phone. I can't really decide what kind of feeling um, I want for a field guide. Uh, if I want it to be like very simple or lots of colors and a bunch of like pictures and illustrations, I haven't decided really. Um, here I have the pictures. Are those all your snapshots right here? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna take uh, better pictures, but this is just what I like. Just a five minute walk, I found these palm right. trees. So. They're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what will be hard is to do the map, I think, because they're everywhere. They're it's everywhere. hard to just pick well, maybe, one spot maybe where they pick are. Maybe palm trees that are a certain height mm -hmm. to map, like the, the 10 oldest palm trees in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Based on their height or something. I won't tell you there's a palm tree farm in Carpinteria or south of Carpinteria hmm. that is on both sides of Highway 1. Okay. Which you could get lost in. Mm -hmm. You could probably interview them. That'd be fun. Yeah. Be done. We don't have a car. No. But I got somebody in here done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. Right? Who wants to go palm tree shopping? <laughs> um, and you decide if you're going to do it through photography or draw them. 
yeah, I think I'm gonna do both. I want um, to create some thumbnails, and I think I want like this, all the categories for the specific like. Why don't you show us your thumbnails? The thumbnails is right down in the dock on the bottom right. See that little folder? If you roll over on the uh, far right. This one. For I can't see the dock, so. Oh, uh, you mean down below? You'll see there's. Where, where are you? Maybe not. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, let's. Yeah. What does that say? Yeah. There you go. Now you can show us your thumbnails. So actually, so Annie is the first person to show us her thumbnails. I haven't seen them yet. So when we, so the requirements for thumbnails, help me Annie or anybody, was you have to have three sets of thumbnails, is that right? And they had to be three images of, in each set. And one of the images had to be your cover design, like your opening page. And the other two images had to be thumbnails of subsequent pages of how they might look. Did I do that right? I'm not sure because I don't know if I did it right. Yeah, so. I'm confused on the instructions. Yeah. Okay, let's just let's go by this right now. I think the instructions say. <clears throat> I guess we could pull them up if we really want to be accurate. Let me do that just it's so. Three sets with the three. Three, like, three, three images. Three. Okay. I it was, so yeah, what I wrote sure. it as was I thought it was three cover designs and three inside designs. Let's read it. So, we're going to have horizontal iPads. Not tall, wide. Thumbnails should be neat. Do them in pencil or whatever you want. I don't, I don't really care what you do them in. But make sure they're scannable, dark enough to scan. And work proportionately. Don't create a set of thumbnails that aren't proportionate to the iPad screen. Um, you need three sets of thumbnails is how I perceive this. So I'm the teacher. You might as well perceive it how I do. Um, and um, I want you to have three screens. So like, like Mike said, three sets of thumbnails, so three different concepts of grid layouts. Each will have its own unique cover design, and then there will be two subsequent pages following that cover design of a possible grid layout for your ideas. How many thumbnails? So that would be nine total. Okay. Nine, there's three, three, and three. Oh. What's that? I did it wrong. What'd you do? You did one set of three. Yeah, I was confused. I thought I was just confused on the instructions. It's okay. You just have two more to do. Yeah, three more. Okay. But that's fine. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get more and more ideas. Okay, so let's, here's, here's, let's look at thumbnail examples too while we're covering all this. Okay. So personally, I, I'm such a planner when I get into a role of brainstorming that you know, it's like, okay, if you're trying to meet the criteria, okay, that'll meet your criteria. But for me, think about what your layout is and what all your categories are. So here's a set of thumbnails for one sample. So the cover would be probably this far right one, right? And then all the pages, you show different grid layouts. I'm going to give this back to you in a second. Here's a second set. The cover doesn't look very different, does it? Just a different color palette, same, same thing with the layout. Um, and then same similar cover um, and covers the lead-in it's the draw and it could be totally different than what it's like a cover on a book and then what the contents of the book is and there needs to be some order to your layout just like in your menu same any publication you need a sense of order stick to a grid layout it will help you you can have a variety of master pages, so like maybe four different layouts in your iPad, and you can decide how you handle it. Um, so just start thinking through what you would add as the content. Um, oh, actually, so here was one set of thumbnails, actually, is what it was. Here's a second way of looking at it, different set of thumbnails. Right. It's just organizing. It's the same as your menus. These were, here, some of these are menu thumbnails. Yeah. Do you want us using color in our thumbnails? I don't care. Okay. I want you to brainstorm. I want you to think how it works for you. You know, I can't emphasize enough. I mean, what I noticed for all of you is you all delivered. You all, when it came to the menu, you all delivered. You guys are amazing. 
and some of you got there at a different rhythm and some of you think a little differently but the process of the research the thumbnails the refining the rethinking it's all the process to get there that's what i'm looking for and if you want to make sure you get that big check that says yes you got 100 percent on this meet the criteria okay and look like you actually cared about it that's Okay, I mean, you guys know what that looks like. I don't, I don't need to explain that to you guys. Um, okay, let me get us back out of here. So let's go to your thumbnails and let's, let's see if you cared, right? So go ahead and explain to us. All right, so I set it up a little differently then. Cause, uh, I just started with the start page and I think I did three examples. Yeah, kind of. So that would be like your first table of contents page talking about the different trees? Yeah. Like the top one is your cover. Yeah, I'm not sure really how I want to feel like, a, like the first. Yeah, I, I know. Um, cause I kind of like this idea of having just all the pictures of the different palm trees. And when you like hover over it, it like the color, because it's first supposed to be like lower transparency and then when you hover over it it becomes like a hundred percent color so you can click on it and then you get to the page where uh, all the information is but um, I don't know these ones are more I guess this is just like cover it doesn't really do anything this one is kind of the same as this and do under. you know how to execute that from experience, um, the hover and change it to color. I, I don't know, but I know someone that can <laughs> help me with it. Okay, well, you'll bring them to class. <laughs> um, yeah, it might have to be that those each of those images become a button, mm -hmm. and that the button changes um, reveals something when you click on it. Yeah, which would be a secondary color. Yeah. So. Um, so this one, I don't know. This would probably work best if I have a cover photo first and then go to welcome page. Click on all those whole links over here. Um, here's some inside examples. Um. Okay, so let's go back a second because you you've done a lot of you've done a lot of stuff here. Um, we haven't. One of the things I want to bring up is. We're not going to do it today, but next week I'll start to introduce to you some exercises in interactivity so you kind of get the concept of how to do some things, right? Like the things we looked at on the iPad. And there's some Linda videos to walk you through it, to walk you through some of the exercises. You're going to have to do a lot of Googling too, to be honest, because you're going to come up with a concept and we're not all, none of us are going to be sure how to get there and we'll have to figure it out, right? Um, but what I want to point out here is a few things. Um, scroll to the top if you don't mind. Let's just take this apart for a second. All right. Too late. Yeah, go all the way. Okay. So this cover page might be as simple as nothing. It might be here's your cover, and you swipe and you go to your next page. Okay. Start thinking in terms of it being a moving design. Now you have a totally different layout here. What you've done is you've created a margin for your iPad. And then you've got six palm trees you're focused on, let's say, right? And I assume that means that you click on one and it takes you to information. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to start to do is create another, besides thumbnails, you're going to need a flow map. You're going to do this again, trust me. I, I don't even remember if there's an assignment for it, but you will. You're going to end up creating like um, an outline, for lack of a better description. So you click on the Sago palm. What goes next? What's your next scroll down? Okay, let's scroll past that. So you click on the Sago palm, stay right here. And maybe after you clicked on one of those palm trees, it took you to this page, which is not your welcome page, but it says Sago palm, right? And here's a picture of the Sago palm. And here now is ways to navigate to all the other palm trees. Because we don't want to go back to that home page of click on the palm tree, right? So here's other palm, other palm, other palm. And here you might have a description. And here you might have a pullout for the temperature it grows best in. 
here's how tall they grow, here's whatever facts and so forth. Or there might be icon buttons down here, which is a button you press that takes you to a page that has a chart of the shortest palm tree to the tallest based on their potential height. Do you follow that? And then you have a button here which might take you to the climate of, that each of these grows best in from the shortest to the tallest based on the heat of the day or the heat of median ambient temperature. How's that for scientific? And then there's another button you press on that says, uh, do they grow coconuts or not? Mm -hmm. Right? Or you, you follow it, so you've got to start thinking. And if that's the case, if this were a page profiling um, the palm tree, this might just be a box here that's scrolling through all the photos of the palm tree. I don't know. Or, um, but then this page would set your grid format for predictability for when you have a descriptor page of the palm tree, they all look like this. Sago palm, date palm, and all the palm trees still are always ranked in the same sequence. Does everybody follow what I'm describing? Okay. So that's what you're starting to tinker with. I understand you're not there yet. Don't worry about it. That's what you're starting to tinker with. And so, so these would become essentially buttons to carry you to another page. And there might be buttons down here or icons to carry you to another page. But once you've created it, you create this format, if she chose this, on a master page. So nothing bounces around. Everything's in identical placement. Everybody understands that too, correct? Okay. And then this one, if this were, let's say, your home page, your start mm -hmm. page, it probably would be your cover. Um, but let's say it's the table of contents. See, there's one of the requirements is there's a table of contents page for these. This would, I would qualify as a table of contents page. Like, oh, look what you're getting into. And what you said is, press that, instead of being black and white, it goes to color. Mm -hmm. I'm making this up. Well, that would basically be a button. You press the button, it turns to cover color when you roll over it, and if you click on it, it jumps you to this page, right? So this is the kind of thing you're gonna start to think through as you start to develop your layouts, okay? All right, keep, keep rolling on that. Did you have questions, Jimmy? Uh, I was just wondering if you, uh, if you stay on the uh, vertical lines, could you turn all those into like full tabs so like if you swipe them, you open up, they become a... Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Because mm. I think that would be a choice. Yeah, like the it words would. and buttons, like when you press them, it like, it just kind of pops up and blurs it back. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think the answer to that is yes. But I don't know that they'd be a pull tab. They might just be, basically, if you touch it, it might just be jumping to a different page. And that page appears like you described, but it's really a different page. Oh, I don't know. The answer is I don't know. I do not know a lot of stuff. <laughs> OK, but we could try it. We can test things. Yeah, that would be a cool idea. Um. <laughs> um, did you just explain how to do the pull tabs? No, I okay. mostly said I didn't know. That's mostly all oh. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I do know how to do pull tabs, and we'll practice it together, but I don't know if it'll behave the way Jimmy wants it to behave, is what it is. I do know how to do them. They're, they're actually very simple. Yeah. The pull, tab, pull tabs are basically, just so it demystifies it, pull tab is basically... You've got a graphic that you want to stick out to here, and you have to do some function to tell it to become a pull tab. And then you pull it back as far as you want it, and then designate as a pull tab. I mean, it, none of this stuff is hard. It's just getting it to behave page to page the way you want it, and knowing how you want it to perform. So I don't know the answer to pull tab. I think we tested pull tabs overlapping other pull tabs. And the answer is yes, they can. The problem with them is they don't bounce back. It's not like those tape measures when you press the button, they all zip back in. They don't do that. you got to pull them out and put them back, and it might get messy. And you stack things on top, and that might get messy. And you can also put buttons on a pull tab, and you can also put videos in a pull tab. So, but, you know, we're limited by our imagination and what we don't get too frustrated doing.
right. Uh, so just different ideas of how I want the inside to look. Um, this is more simple and this is more color. May I have even more color if this is like a background picture and then a picture in the picture and uh, and another really simple <coughs> one. So I just haven't come up really with my concept of simple or just over the top. Uh, and I just cre created a map, um, which I don't really know yet how I'm going to do, but maybe if I see a, s a certain place where there is a lot of the same palm tree kind, yeah. then I can just have it like that. Um, yeah, and it might be palm trees in a one block radius or something. Or, mm -hmm. or, or, oh, or palm trees at the Santa Barbara Four Seasons built one, which has every palm tree probably you could possibly name in the most beautiful garden. Where is that? Uh, Montecito. Yeah, it's, it's right it's on the beach. Butterfly Beach. Oh, okay. It's gorgeous. There's also an estate. Anybody know what that estate is who lives here? It's some garden. Uh, bunch oh, of yeah. trees and cactus. Lotus, Lotus, Lotus land. land. Lotus land. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they have palm trees there. But you know, you could. I'm pretty sure they do. You just have to make an appointment. Yeah, oh, it used to be used now. Okay. And it's in, it's, I mean, it's kind of back yeah. a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, it depends on how ambitious, you know, going, wandering around the Biltmore is free, it's gorgeous. And, um, you know, maybe that makes it easier for you. Yeah. We'll have a site map of the hotel. Yeah. You could tell the hotel you're doing it for a project, and would they like what you do? Maybe they'll use it, you know, and, you know, something like that, when you guys make your decisions, there's an elitism by choosing that, for example, where, oh, I did it for the Biltmore or something like that. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's one location that's a big site that has probably every problem okay. you need. So you mean that I could make a map out of just that place? That hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they would already have a map for you. Okay. And then you could identify all the palm tree species yeah. on their site. And it just might relax you to yeah. have a location. And it's so gorgeous, it would yield gorgeous photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to look that up and find someone Anybody with a car. a different idea for palm trees? Yeah. I'm zoo? assuming you're going to have like uh, other images of them, like close-ups of the leaves and yeah. the... Yeah, I'm planning to do like slideshows of every, like these ones, that's why I kind of made the arrows, because you oh, can just yeah. swipe through different pictures of the same palm tree, different angles and close up and far away. So, yeah, it was just a map thing that I was mostly worried about, but... Yeah, how to locate them around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know Santa Barbara that well. Who else knows Santa Barbara to suggest palm tree person? I know Santa Barbara well, but I think you chose the... I mean, Biltmore is, is a good place. Yeah. And Lotus Land is, is good, but I think they, they specialize in other things. <coughs> yeah. The un uncommon. It's a really neat place. I don't really... Stuff. I think it's, it's probably really... In, right now too you just you might have to pay it's members okay. only type of place okay yeah that's why you have to sign them online and yeah they have to meet you at the gate and let you in and it's oh, okay specific. yeah yeah and the Biltmore is pretty yeah butterfly beach is right there mm -hmm. and they have whiskey <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> this is our park you should what already was started what is the park down by the beach it's what? called Palm it's still audition oh places, though. Does anybody else know that? Carol says there's a palm tree park at the beach? Chase Palm Park. Chase Palm oh, Park. Something, yeah. There you go. It's where all the whales are. The um, concrete whales. It's right across from West Beach. I mean, East Beach. Uh, Chase Palm Park. Right on Cabrillo. We can just look on a map think. for it. Yeah. So isn't it just like walking down a path then? Um, it's just right on Cabrillo across from the... Oh, it's that pretty little garden. 
across the street from the beach? Uh, it's got a lot of like it's a, a big kid playground. Yeah, but okay. it has a little it has a pond. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Very Very during the day. Too. That's pretty too. Yeah, I'll have to say where to go. I'll they probably go to different there, places. Though. They don't know what. Room service. <laughs> huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is great. You're off to a great start. Where you go from here, I don't. I think you've got your categories, and I think as you pick your site, you're going to decide how to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. You know, like Jimmy was mentioning, or John was mentioning, close up. Like, what's the trunk like? What's yeah. the texture of the leaves? How many fronds mm -hmm. are there? Uh, what are their? What happens when they flower? Palm trees are gorgeous when they flower. Do are they, they date palms or coconut palms? Right. Mm -hmm. What fruit do they bear? Um, yeah. Good ideas. Good ideas. Uh, one question I have about that is, should I have that as just kind of icons that you click on? Or is it more like a flowing text, like like about the palm tree? Or just have I be so small? I personally think that a field guide is not about reading a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think that what makes a field guide successful is really amazing <clears throat> photography that is rich, mm. you know, filled with, I don't want to say filled with color because I don't, you know, black and white could be equally amazing, but beautiful photography cropped and handled well. Yeah. And, um, or quirky photography. You know what I mean? Silly is equally as fun, but but pick your brand, pick your mm -hmm. style, and um, and if you could visually depict texture or fruit or if you could visually depict it some way, I think it's much better yeah. than stating it. Show, yeah. you know, with everything, show don't tell, mm -hmm. show don't tell. So if you can show it somehow visually, I think yeah. it makes it more successful. That's the exact uh, point of the. Design guide. A field guide? A field guide. The, the point of a field guide is um, to create comparisons of one category. It started with bird field guides. Oh. So people would have a little pocket guide to go with their binoculars and go look at birds out wherever they were hiking. And you could go spot the bird, look it up, and cross reference it based on its size or its color or the season, or the location, you would have all these different ways to cross-reference it. So the point of a field guide is to create common ground between your common category and differences, show commonalities and differences. What would I be trying to show, for example? Well, uh, let's, let's finish I'm sorry, here with I'm Annie. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I think I'm done. Are you done? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've thought it through. Um, where you would go from this, after your thumbnails is, start playing around with things. Start mm -hmm. gathering information. We have one more week before we hit spring break. And um, next week, you'll come back. We'll continue to look at your thumbnails as you developed it. If you're stuck in a corner, we're going to pull you out of your corner. And um, we're going to help brainstorm and continue to. And then we're going to demo some interactive techniques next week so you can kind of get a feel for this because we're in week nine. Week nine. Our class, our last week is 16. I know it goes really fast, I think, right? Is that true? Mm -hmm. um, so I want you guys to feel capable. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, are, so are we on track to where our computer refs are due next class? Yeah, you know, um, yes, next, what what Annie's showing us here, the roughs, or you uploaded roughs already. I did, yeah, but, but redo I'm going to um, refine them. Yeah, my, if you get the idea, I want you to refine and refine and refine and think through and think through, because you're not going to hit the nail on the head right away. I don't expect anybody to. Um, and once you start to know, once you start to get cornered with interactivity, you might say, oh, that was a really good idea, but, right? Yeah. Or once you do interactivity, you're going to be like, oh my god, that's my favorite thing to create in the world. I want to do every page like that. Do you know you're going to have to have video in this? You're going to decide whether you have music in it. You do have to have sound in it. Um, that'll be part of it also. 
um, <coughs> multi-state objects. There's criteria. Don't go away. Um, well, actually, what you did is fantastic. So thank you. There's criteria for how this gets graded. So let's just let's get down to specifics here. Um, just like your menus, I found that all of you um, did great. You all did great. But let's just look at how these get evaluated. Um, and there's, it's complicated how you upload the thing too. So um, I did say that we we're going to use the last half hour on packaging. Was there anybody who wanted to get um, to show their their research or their refs right now? You guys speak up. You want to? Okay. All right. Then let me show the grading. We'll do yours, and then we'll do that packaging thing we were all talking about. Um, oh. We want the rubric. That's what we want. Right here. iPad rubric. iPad rubric. Here's how you get graded. Um, your images. So again, you're creating a brand. Um, do your images reflect the personality of the field guide? Right? So Annie could make hers tropical paradise, um, or she could make hers um, very scientific, like she's a botanist. Right? You could pick your brand. Um, but you want to, you know, you want to delight, delight us. Whether it's humorous or serious or whatever it is, you want to delight us. You need to um, master type just the way you master type in all the menus. Paragraph style sheets, master pages so when your page layouts don't bounce around. You need to organize your content so it's easily, readily understandable. You want to create a cover that makes us say, oh my god, I never thought about that. I can't wait to see what that's about, right? You want to draw us in. Um, spell check. A lot of us are not good at that. Um, you want to have a compelling cover design. You want to organize this so when you move to the next page, um, you know, like if you have credits, if you've used photography or if you've used sources or something, or if you have hyperlinks to send people to for where you got information, that would be credits. Um, I don't need a table of contents like on page one, it's this. I consider the table of contents ways to organize what, what we're going to see. That's how I see table of contents. So it's very understandable what is in the publication. Like, oh, if, you, if you have, um, let's take the palm trees. Um, Annie said she's going to measure them based on the height. You said you're going to measure them based on the temperature they grow in, the number of years they survive, the roughness of the trunk, whether they have fruit. That would be your criteria for measurement <clears throat> and what we're going to look through, maps of where they're located, and so forth, scientific names. That's the kind of thing a table of contents would tell us. It's not that you have to organize it that way, but just so we know what we're going to see inside. Okay? Um, it says 10 screens. You guys are going to have a lot more than 10 screens for sure. You're just going to end up with more t than that. Um, the things that I do count, definitely, in terms of interactivity, because the publication stuff, you're all going to get your arms around. But you're going to need to have a multi-state object, which we'll start practicing, flipping through those images. You're going to have a pan and zoom where you spread it out with your fingers, right? Move it around a photo. You all know what that means, right? Okay. Um, Hyperlink to web page, you know what that means. Um, image slideshow. Um, that could be a multi-state object or an automatically rotating slideshow that just plays. Okay. Um, pull tabs, you saw that demo. Um, audio music or background sound that we can turn on and off because you don't want somebody to be stuck with it. You will have a video. You can shoot your own video. You can find a video, um, what's appropriate. You know, you might find that there is a video for a professional video taken of the Biltmore grounds, if you did that, for example. Or you might find that there is some snobby video of some guy pontificating about whiskey. 
and the nuances of it. Or you might, some whiskey manufacturer, or you might have a video from Comic-Con, right? I mean, who knows? The idea is engage us. I mean, every time I looked at the videos that students put in their pieces, I was like excited by them. I, I found them, I, it made me want to learn more. And that's really what you want people to feel, just like a really good book. You want people to get real excited by it. And that's how you get ranked for this. Yeah. So I know there's a um, limit on, or a minimum on screens, but is there a minimum on how many things you can put? How many things? No. Okay. Not really. I mean, the, the truth is, is you're going to want to, it's not like you have to have 12 things to compare and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, you want it to be comprehensive, but you don't want to make it boring, too. Right. Right? So it's, it's a balance. Okay. And, and you want it to be fun. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole point of this, the whole point of this, in my perception, is I want you to reinforce your skills with publication design, continuity, layout, branding, color palette, uh, understanding, organization of content. It's a big project. Then um, I want you to understand um, how to how to brand it well so you communicate effectively with that content. And then interactivity, how to make something fun and engage people and surprise them and draw them in, right? And it doesn't matter what your subject matter, because each of us is picking something we're passionate about, so that passion should pour out of it. We should feel the excitement about it. That's what I think. Right? So I, don't, I still don't understand what anybody could get from what I'm doing. Well, from what you're doing, I, um, you have a unique situation. You're going to end up comparing Basically, I, one of the things you and I talked about is we talked about comparing facilities, but you're not comparing facilities. So I personally think that what you might do is compare apartments and personalities of apartments. And so you've got a place that has a map. Every room is the same, but who's inside that room is unique. So like each palm tree is unique, each room is unique. The person who inhabits it, their quirks, their special needs, the things they value about the common place they all live. Um, you said each door is different and they decorate it differently. Um, that's a key to their personality. Each person inhabits an identical space, but they personalized it. And how did they make it different? That's so great. That's the way I would hook on cheers. I'll write that down. You can write it down and you can go to johnlemon.info and get today's video and hear it. Yes. Okay. I learned that. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, Jake, come on up. Uh, can we just go over the packaging? Pack? Oh, okay. You'd rather do that? Yeah, I'm done. After seeing everyone else, it kind of a better idea. But okay. All right. Then, then we're going to head right now to packaging really quickly. Just And we're going hit, to hit really quickly with master pages. I got 24 minutes to do it. Um, it's not everything on the planet, but let's just do this. You have a new idea now? No, I have a better idea of how I should categorize things. And oh, did that help you? Yeah, yeah. that's why we keep repeating this stuff, because we all need ideas. Okay, so here I am in InDesign, and the first thing I want to do is this. I want to change to Digital Publishing Workspace. Okay? Then, because I'm so easily confused. I always have to change my toolbox to be two columns because I'll never find anything. And then, Mike, and then, this is for you, in the toolbox when you create a document, if you start off with a black stroke here and a none fill, it means any time you draw a box, if I created a new document now, every box I drew would default to that. So don't do it. So none, none. Okay? The other thing you said today, which is why I called attention to you, yeah. is you said every time I do a document, I change it to inches, and it always goes back. The only time you, have, you can change something to um, inches is before you open a document, and that will make it your default. If you change it when the document is open, 
it will only apply to that document, but it won't apply to any other document afterwards. So I can go to units and increments right now, change this to inches, and that should stick, that should hold. And so now, when I create a new document here in InDesign, I'm going to create it for the iPad. So the intention is not print, the intention is digital publishing. And as digital publishing, um, I want, I can decide whether I want a primary text frame or not, and I'm going to turn that off because I don't, I want to, I don't want to um, have that pop up on all my pages because that might be automatic flow is what that's after. You know what I mean? If you add more text and it flows page to page, if you have an automatic text frame, it will flow page to page as you load your content. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and here's my iPad, and I want it wide, not tall. And my default for this um, right here is it, it defaults into pixels here. So let me, let me go back and see if I can change that. I'm not sure. It should be. So I still prefer working in inches, and it's letting me. I don't know why it defaulted into pixels. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I'm just stuck here with that. The only other thing I can tell you is, well, I was just going to say that. Yes, you're absolutely 100% right. You are 100% right. So what Chelsea just said is we're going to go to the digital publishing. We want it wide, not tall. We're turning off, for me, I'm turning off the text frame. And I could type right now a half an inch margin, which would be huge. Um, on this, and that's the default. Did you see how a half inch, um, it still defaulted to pixels. Oh, I know why. Because I did 0.5 and inches, right. There we go. 36 pixels. Okay. Um, you don't need a bleed, ever. There's not going to be a bleed, right. Um, and I'll leave the default for the moment because I don't know what I want. Um, I could set up my columns here, which will become the default. We already know um, that 36 pixels is a half an inch. You probably don't want half inch gutters, but you probably... Yes, John? One thing to note at this point, we all know that the iPad has what? At least 360 PPI? 360 PPI? At least. I don't know. That's probably more. We're going to have to Google it. Well, but the point is, if 36 pixels is half inch, that wouldn't match up with the retina display of the iPad. So these are what are called reference pixels. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And, and there's a difference between the actual pixels like you get in Photoshop and reference pixels, which is what CSS looks at in terms of the appearance of the, uh, the graphic element. It's a, it's a, um, John understands CSS far more than I do. John's a web guy. I'm a print girl. I don't, it's, a different, it's a different language to me. Um, but it is why I spent so much time testing things. And um, let's just leave it at the default. And let's make this a quarter of an inch, which would be 18 pixels, and see what we end up with right now when I say OK. Slowly think about it. So that's what we get. Um, master pages, you can't see this because our screen's cutting it off, but here's our page panel. Let me just tear it off. Um, you know, let me go to a master page and just start to lay out maybe something that Annie did, right? Okay. Annie had a layout that. Um, Oh, I'm going to really cut off my nose right now. I can feel it coming. Meaning, I wasn't prepared for this lecture, and I might go into dark territory that I'm not prepared for. But let's take our first column, and let's just let's just name our let's let's let me do this differently. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time with design. So here's our palm tree. And here's our date palm. And here's our Seiko palm. 
and here's our royal palm. And you had a king palm, didn't you? Got anything else for me? Queen. Of course. <laughs> Why would I ask? Okay, that's good enough. I don't want to take up all your time. And um, so here we go. And then you could take these, and these might, for example, become buttons. So I take all these, let's say, um, and they don't need to sit at the margins, actually, now that I think about it. Um, they could maybe go out to here. And I can, and they can go up to here to the bleeds. I don't know, and I can go to object. Um, let me ungroup them again. Go to object text frame options, and I can center them vertically in their text boxes. Let me preview that, and um, say OK. And I can center the text using. I just, I don't really like it centered like that. Let's hit undo. Let's go back. <laughs> Don says, no, it's ugly. <laughs> let me break my link and let me give myself a half inch here. We already know 36 pixels and a half inch, and there we go. And then we can take each of our boxes and pretend that I carefully colored each one a different color. There. There. All right. And each one was a different color. There you go. And, um, and then I could also go to Window, and I can go to <coughs> Object Layout Align, and I can distribute spacing. So I have to hide options, or to show options, and I can dis distribute spacing. So watch them equally space there, right? That's my favorite. Anyway, then the other part is, um, let's, you know what? If I fail, you guys won't make fun of me, will you? So let's just do this. Let's leave that blue. Let's make that yellow. Let's make that red and pink and green. Right? All right. And I don't know what I'm doing, okay? just in case you all wonder. Um, I was making those like multi-state objects to scroll through whatever, like that t-shirt exercise we're gonna do. Um, and so let's say these might be buttons, and let's say these might be, I haven't done multi-state objects for over quite a few months. So now what Jake asked, I'm gonna stay there Jake, is packaging. So I'm going to make this graphic box, hit Command-D, which is File, Place, Command-D, and I'm going to place um, one of our animals we took today, right? Um, here's our whale, and I'm going to go to Object, Fitting, Fill, Frame, Proportionately. I always use the word proportionate if it's available. Now I'm going to copy this, Command-C. I'm going to go to Edit, Paste, and Place directly on top. I'm going to go to File Place with it active, and I'm going to go place the lambs and the rams. Okay. And then I'm going to go Edit, Paste, and Place. I have, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to go to Edit, Paste, and Place. There's my whale. Command D, put the loris, the slow loris, so cute. And go to Edit, Paste, and Place. There we go. And now I'm going to put the, what's this called? Hedgehog, our little hedgehog. <coughs> Is he just so cute? John, wait, did you see us pulling all these down earlier, John? No? We were having a good time before you got here. Oh. <laughs> there, and our puppies. I think I'm confused about the paste in place. Well, I'll tell you why I did this. I mostly was... Um, there. What I wanted to do was I wanted to take all these images and put them directly on top of each other to, because I was ultimately going to make a multi-state object. But you want the whale on top? I don't care. Oh, okay. And I did paste in place because I want them all stacked identically on top of each other in oh. exactly the same location without wiggling around. Yeah. Okay? I mean, what I can do right now is I can take 
all these images and I can make them all flush left and I can make them all centered centered and I can make them all centered horizontally and I can move them and it's all going to accomplish the same thing I think right and what I started thinking that I was going to do is link them to trees but I'm not ready to do that and we've got 12 minutes mostly I wanted to package so before I fail at packaging I'm going to do packaging successfully and then I'm going to show you multi-staped object if I remember because I got to practice for next week but so I've got all these images of the puppy and the humpback whale and so forth, right? Everybody saw that? Yeah, John? I'm pretty sure we have videos of that. I know, but I'm supposed to be good at this. No, I'm talking about for reference for next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, me too, but I'm supposed to teach you, it. You can watch yourself. <laughs> I'm just going to put myself on video for you guys. All right, so you all know that there's all these pictures here. So now I've got type, which was minion, pro, um, colors, which are irrelevant because I didn't make a color palette out of it and like five photographs if I remember correctly so I'm gonna save my document I should have done that before I'm gonna save it as um, um, photo test and put it on the desktop and now I have a document now one of the things Carol asked me earlier is where do my links go when I have photos in a document here when I have photos in a document, they will be in the links panel. How you find the links panel is you go to window links, okay? And the links panel is right here. You can tear it off. You can make it super wide. You can um, see what's going on here. I don't have any red stop signs, which means everything is properly linked. I don't have any yellow warning signs, which means everything is up to date, okay? So how I keep all my stuff together, for example, if you were going to work on it on campus, then package it, and then take that package and work on it at home on a different computer, you want to always package and make sure your links are current. You want no warning for it. No stop, you did something wrong, and you'll see what I mean. So everything's linked and everything's happy. So I've saved my document. Packaging is easy. You go to File, Package. And then what it does is it says, these are the fonts you used. It tells me my warning here. My only warning is my images are RGB. RGB is dead on target and perfect for what we're doing. Digital, no problem. Okay? Spot colors would be a worry. They'll turn out weird. So you're going to have to convert them to RGB. So that doesn't have to be embedded in the project anywhere. You can just slide it on top. This window shows up. Everything's placed, not pasted into. Everything is placed in InDesign. And so all my images are placed and they're linked to where they were. So if I go to my links panel right now, window links, it says, oh look, you have five images. They're linked to wherever they were sitting before. And so now I'm going to package it to put it in one folder, one location nothing is embedded it's linked and now I go to file package I get a window that says hey look at this it's a yellow what does that mean it means everything's everything's linked nothing's modified nothing's missing but everything's in RGB color and then you say oh that's good that's what I want and you click the word package and then it says instructions and that's if I were to send it to a print shop and I wanted to send them information a text file telling them what to do I'm gonna ignore it I'm going to hit continue, then I'm going to get something that says, what do you want to copy into your folder? And with um, Creative Cloud, interestingly, it will copy your fonts, which I want. It's going to copy my linked graphics, which I want. It's going to update my graphic links to that package so it knows where to find them. It's going to create an IDML file, which is for an old version of InDesign. If you wanted to give it to a friend who had InDesign 6, you give them an IDML file, which is going in the package. And then if you want a proof of this, it's automatically generating a PDF based on what I did last time, which is high quality print. Be careful. If you're, if you're doing this interactive, it's easy when you're packaging it to have the PDF default to 
print. Yes. And then that messes that can mess you up if you use that PDF if it's interactive. Yes. But we'll get to that much later. But yes, you're absolutely correct. And then do you hit the package in the corner? And then you hit the package in the corner. Yes. And then it says, please don't sell the fonts. We're going to hunt you down. And you say, OK. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It will have packaged everything. Oh, and it says there's overset. All these, all these color boxes at the bottom when I squish my type, that's my overset. Don't ever package with overset, OK? And then it packages all my images. And what's going to happen is, is when I look on the desktop to my package and I close this, um, we're going to see a folder here, right here. It was called my test folder. Let's close those. And in my package folder, I have my native document, the PDF proof for print, um, and a version that oh, an IDML file, which is it's called InDesign markup. 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 markup okay, markup language, and. Um, it has all those five photos. The five photos still remain on my desktop. It just duplicated them and put them in my links folder, and it added my fonts. Now, if I wanted to add this to the cloud so I could send it home for myself, so I could grab it off of like Dropbox or something, all I have to do is highlight this folder in Finder with it active, go to compress it, and it's going to make a zipped one single file of everything in that folder zipped. Okay? And now I could email that to myself, which might be too huge, send it to Dropbox, put it on a flash drive. Okay? Everybody gets that. All right. Now, what I was going to try to do, I have five minutes to make a fool of myself if you guys are kind enough, if you want. Um, multi state object is pretty simple. Um, multi-state object is basically, let's just say back and let's say forward, we'll just do forward, there, forward, and we'll delete those. Okay, so this might be a back button going back in that direction for scrolling through something and this is a forward button here. So I'm going to show you one way to do multi-state. We're going to do it differently next week. But I hope I remember. So I'm going to take my forward button so I can scroll forward through my photos and turn it to a button in the buttons panel. And I'm going to call this my next button, my forward button. I like naming everything. It's not letting me yet. Oh, here it is. I'm going to call this forward and I name things perfectly, multi-state, okay? And the action, um, I'm not going to set up yet, and I'll show you why. And I'm going to take my back button, make it a button, click on action. I'm sorry, not on action. Click on a new button at the bottom. And I'm going to call this um, back multi-state. I haven't done this in so long. I hope I'm right, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all five of those photos that are stacked. Everybody knows they're all stacked on top of each other. And I am going to go to Object States right here. I'm in the Digital Publishing panel. I go to Object States. And with all five of these photos stacked on top of each other, I'm going to turn them into what's called an Object State. And I can do that by converting my selection to a multi-state object. And I just click, and they get that little dotted border. Okay, so now I have a multi-state object. Chelsea asked me, did I want the whale on top? I could put the whale and move them to the top. Did you see how I slid it? Like moving layers. Okay, so these are a state, everything here. I have little icon pictures. And now if I click on the four button and I go to my button panel, my button's not doing anything. It's just a button. So I have to give my button an action. What do I want my button to do? I click on it. And I want my button to go to the next state. Next, next, next. OK, next state. That's it. That's all I want it to do. I go to my back button. What do I want it to do? I give it an action. I want it to go to my previous state. I hope to God I'm right on this. OK? I'm going to save my document, Command-S. 
At the bottom of almost every panel, there is a preview right here. And um, it's an interactive publication preview. Okay, I hear you. And I only have one page in this document, so I don't have to pay attention to preview all pages here or preview my one page. And if I click on preview, it's going to show me whether I successfully did the interactivity. Let's see if I did. So you'd be nice. I'm going to hit play to load everything. So, okay. Oh, did I do this on a master page? And that's why it keeps telling me to do this. I probably did. It's okay. That's not my pages. Where's my page panel? I bet I did. That's why it's warning me. I did. Okay, so that's easy enough to fix. Watch what happens. Let me yank this. Okay, did that. Okay. Oh, I know. You know, it doesn't even matter. I could have left it on my master page, but I'll just move it now. So it's on my ma it's on my page one. You can set this up on a master page, and I'll prove that in a second, but let's just do this now. Um, okay, so close that up. Let me preview it. Now it won't get, tell me that anymore. Now I'm going to load it, and now I'm going to practice it. And what should happen is, if I hit the four button, it should scroll through all my little animals. And if I hit the back button, it should scroll through backwards. That's a multi-state object. Okay? They're not, it's really not hard, right? It's kind of cute, fun. All right. So, and I, just to prove that thing about the master pages, you want master pages when you do stuff. So let me cut this off and let me show you what happens with a master page. And we have one minute left and then we'll wrap it up. Um, I can paste everything on my master page. What they were telling me is I can't test it from the master page. So if I go to my preview here, I should be able to do this. Yes, it should be. Let me go here. Let me get out of this EPUB. Let's go here. Let's go to interactive Swift preview. There we go. Don't give me grief here. Maybe it's an EPUB thing. There we go. So it's on my master page. I'm on the Swift preview of interactivity. I'm loading everything. And again, multi-state back, right? And what you might choose to do is turn the date poem page into a button that jumps you to a different page, right? But we have to think in terms of swiping and touching. So we have to work on all that. But anyway, that's, that's our simple multi-state. Was that cool? And I didn't fail. I'm so proud. Yes, John? I have found that, practically speaking, if you put something like this on the web, it won't work on all devices and then all browsers. Oh, that's, that's probably true. And I f used to think that the only thing that would work in PDFs was hyperlinks, only to discover that if you have a PDF in Dropbox with hyperlinks, they won't work. That's true, too, for sure. And that's where people are going to look at. That's possible. In a, right, on a cloud, it's possible. Um, anyway, we covered digital page setup. We covered uh, units and increments. We covered strokes. We covered multi-state object, much to my surprise today. And uh, master pages. Yeah? It gets you launched. Next week, please come with more research, more thumbnails, asking <coughs> more questions, and we'll tinker around in some of this interactivity stuff. Don't forget your articles and exercises and all that stuff. Okay? Thank you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you.